Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are yet again back at Motorport in Rokanje on the island of Vornepötte. And it is the second day of Easter and that means KTM day. In this video we are taking out the 890 Adventure. And using the same concept as during the Kawasaki Promo Tour in the last three videos, we are riding in a group of different KTM models so we can get the feel of this Austrian machinery. Five minutes into the ride we stopped to have the opportunity to adjust our mirrors or go through the different riding modes of the bike. I decided to keep it in street mode. Other modes on the 890 Adventure are rain, off-road and rally. And that brings me to a topic that I didn't expect at first. But after hearing about it and doing some research on the website of KTM and Google, I was a bit surprised and to be honest I'm not sure how I feel about this topic. What seems to be the case? Well, if you buy the 890 Adventure, you'll pay the base price of 17,100 euros. And you will get all the different modes and features that are available, such as motor slip regulation, cruise control, quick shifter plus, that means up and down instead of only up, and the rally ride mode. But, once the bike hits 1000 kilometers on the odometer, everything disappears and the functions I mentioned earlier are gone. The bike is delivered on a so-called demo mode. If you would like to get those features back, you have to go back to your dealer and buy the features through a firmware update. If you want the Quick Shifter Plus, you will have to pay 395 euros. If you want Cruise Control, you pay 276 euros. For MSR, you will pay 167 euros and if you want the Rally Pack, you will be built for another 246 euros. If you want it all, and order them separately, you will have to pay another 1087 euros. But KTM has your back on that one. If you decide to re unlock all the features that you had the day before and you do it at once, you will get the tech pack, which will cost you only 941 euros. So that's a saving of 145 euros, which you can use to buy the connectivity unit kit to connect your smartphone with, to your bike. I understand the economics behind it from a manufacturer's point of view. KTM only has to build one bike and that does it all. And the individual customer gets what he or she wants. But from a customer's point of view, it feels a bit like paying twice for the same product. The extra costs are not for the additional added parts like a skid plate or extra lights, but for software and hardware that is already on the bike when you buy it. Let me know in the comments below what your opinion is on the topic. Do you think this is the future or would you stay away from upselling tactics like these?
I haven't told you anything about the specs of this KTM adventure bike. Well, here we go. It has a 889cc two-cylinder parallel twin engine that puts out 77 kilowatts or 103 horsepower. It has a six-speed transmission and the engine is liquid-cooled. The bike has a 20 liter fuel tank and the fuel consumption is set by KTM at one liter of fuel every 22 kilometers. And when we do the math, the brochure tells us that we can do about 440 kilometers on the tank of fuel. The bike has a dry weight of 200 kilograms, so that is without any fluids, and the bike is equipped with WP Apex suspension, front and rear, where you will find a monoshock at the back. The suspension travel is about 200 mm front and rear, so the bike is ready to go off-road. Oh, and in case you're wondering, the seat height is 860 mm high, so a tall guy like me can fit easily on this medium-sized adventure bike. I am riding this bike for about 20 minutes now and my impressions until this point are that the bike feels extremely light. It's easily maneuverable and going through traffic is fairly easy. The engine feels rough and what I mean by that is you can hear the parallel twin engine growl. The sound is raw and aggressive, but that is what you expect with a two cylinder engine. The bike gives you enough power to conquer the streets and my guess is that it will do the same thing when you take it off the paved road and into the dirt. With its engine size, it's considered a mid-sized adventure bike, and its big brother, the 1290 Super Adventure, will give you even more power to plow through sand. Speaking of the 1290 Super Adventure, it was the plan to also take that one out during the KTM day, but the weather changed quickly and dramatically after riding this 890 and the 1290 Super Duke, which you will see in the next video by the way. There seemed to be a storm coming with harsh winds and lots of rain, and sometimes you just have to decide to call it quits and take the safe side. I did manage to sit on the 1290 Super Adventure, and the obvious comparison that I could make was that it felt more bulkier than the 890 version. And it is my understanding from my buddy Kevin, who is still looking for his new bike, and did have the opportunity to take the 1290 out for a ride, that it handled relatively easy, and although it felt more heavy, it didn't reflect during the ride. The only thing we both mentioned after our test rides, that was definitely one of the reasons that we decided to call it quits due to the weather, were the tires. Both KTM adventure bikes were fitted with Mitas tires, and especially on spots where the tarmac was repaired, the tires felt somewhat slippery. Not enough to lose control, but enough to give you the feeling that you're pushing it. Maybe it's just that we're not used to riding on this brand, but if I compare them to the Bridgestone tires on the Versus we tested two videos back, the level of trust we had was like day and night.
it is time to take the KTM 890 Adventure back to the dealer. This was my first time on a KTM bike and all in all, the 890 Adventure isn't a bad bike. I pers personally found it a little too light for my taste, but if you enjoy going off-road, this might well be the bike for you. If you are not yet subscribed to my channel, this is a great time to do that. And if you also hit the bell icon, you will get a notification every time I upload a new video. Also check out my other videos here on YouTube and on my social media accounts. In the next video I'm testing the 1290 Super Duke R from KTM. See you then, bye!